Thank you very much, Chairman Burgess, and apologize for being late for the hearing. And I know you go through this every day. I've been multitasking all day long. Uh, but Chairman Burgess, thank you for holding this hearing. Once again, the administration has shown how out of touch it is with most Americans. It is not surprising that this administration is proposing more changes, yet more changes to health care that will harm the middle class and make it more difficult for our citizens to access quality health care. I'm from North Carolina. My constituents want health care, plain and simple. People across the country want health care. That is why, despite all the Republican efforts to undermine the ACA, the program is still going. In my opinion, it's still going strong, and more than one million Americans signed up for the ACA for the first time after President Trump pulled the rug or attempted to pull the rug from under the program. This budget ignores the wishes of our constituents who flooded our offices with calls asking us to protect the ACA and, and protect Medicaid from Republican efforts to gut these programs. It also ignores the bipartisan will of Congress that just approved a two-year budget uh, with increased funding for important health programs like the National Institutes of Health. This budget would take health care away from my constituents, and I strongly oppose it. I voted for the Budget Deal Act last week. Since the Affordable Care Act was first implemented, the uninsured rate steadily declined year after year. From 2010 to 2016, 20 million Americans gained health insurance. Unfortunately, this administration has done everything it can to reverse that, in my opinion. Since President Trump took office, the Department of Health and Human Services has done its best, in my opinion again, to sabotage health coverage for individuals, make it harder for people to get covered. As a result, for the first time since the ACA was implemented, and it was this committee that implemented the ACA, I was part of it, the uninsured rate actually increased for the first time. According to Gallup, three million more Americans were uninsured in 2017 compared to the previous year. It was also the largest single year increase that has been observed since Gallup began collecting this data. Quite an accomplishment after years of seeing the uninsured rate go down. Now, Mr. Secretary, I understand from my staff, you've been on the uh, job for 14 days, and so I won't be brutal with you. Uh, uh, even though I have some very strong feelings, I understand when you're new to something, you have to, uh, to get uh, acclimated. Uh, but yes or no, please. Uh, do you agree or disagree, sir, that three million more uninsured uh, does not a reflect, well, first of all, do you agree with the three million number? Is that accurate? Um, I I don't know that that's accurate. I just I don't know. I I don't have the the current up to date uninsured numbers after the enrollment period that came out of the Affordable Care Act enrollments. We were slightly off this year from previous from the previous year. I don't know the aggregate change on the uninsured. I think I think all of the stakeholders generally agree there was a tick down. Now how slightly sharp it was, I, I don't know. Don't don't know that answer for sure. Uh, but that's not success. Uh, Any time the uninsured rate goes down, that is not a measure of success. Would you agree or disagree? I think it reflects the problems that we have with the Affordable Care Act and that individual market program. That's why we want to work together to try to change it, to, fix, to, to create a program that actually will work and deliver for those 28 plus million Americans for whom this program is not giving them affordable access to insurance. So we want to work together to try to solve that for those forgotten men and women. We, we talk so much about the, the about 10 million who are in the individual market there that we're buying insurance for subsidized, and we forget the ones who have been priced out of that marketplace that, that we really have to come up with solutions but for. But you certainly agree that, it's, that it's, a, it's a legitimate goal for all of us as, as leaders uh, to try to make sure that the population has access to health care. That, that goes without we, saying. We all share that goal, yes. Okay. And do you make a commitment to us that you will work with us to the extent that you can to make that happen? Absolutely. According to HHS, minorities are less likely to receive diagnosis and treatment for their mental illness, have less access to and availability of mental health services, often receive poor quality of mental health care. To address these disparities, Congress just authorized a minority fellowship in 21st Century Cures. We are very proud of that program. This program has been supported for many years to improve health care outcome for racial and ethnic populations by growing the number of culturally competent professionals to serve the underserved. Last question. 
Yes or no, please. Is HHS proposing to eliminate this program fiscal year 2019? I, I do not recall that program in our budget. I'd be happy to get back to you in writing on get that. Back, get gentleman's back to me. Gentleman's time has expired. That, that is very important. 